Hey everybody, it's me, Beard Lasers. Thanks for joining us. I just wanted to make a quick uh, noob guide or uh, a guide for beginners in this awesome game called Manor Lords. I had a really rough time in the beginning and I'm actually going to cut to a clip of that right now, letting you know how that went. Well, well, well. Guys, there's water right here. Ah! What chaos, though. <laughs> what chaos. So, yeah. We don't want to go through that again. So, what we're going to do is we're going to give you uh, a few tips and tricks on uh, how to get this game started. I'm not into city builders. I'm not a big experienced person on that, so... I really would have appreciated something uh, very short and sweet like this of just how to get these things started. So that's what I'm going to do for you right now. So um, let's have a look at the game here. So when you start out, most people are going to go through here. You set up your character and choose all your coat of arms. And then the three game modes you have is Rise to Prosperity, Restoring the Peace, and On the Edge. Most people go for restoring the peace, it's the middle of the run, but I would say if you just want to have like um, a go at the game, I would say just go Rise to Prosperity, which means you just want to reach the large town settlement level and uh, go relaxing. So it turns off all the AI, it turns off all the radar frequency. You can just have a peaceful experience, unlike what I had that you just saw before, and um, you can just learn the game. That's probably a good way to start. But I jump straight into the Restoring the Peace, which is Conquer Every Region. And I went with Default, which what is, it's, it's what most people are going for. Um, those that are streaming and playing for the first time on release. So um, now the game released, um, that's what most people are going for. So uh, you can change the uh, rate of frequency and things here and make it custom if you want. Uh, you can say none, even in um, this game mode, um, or you can, most people are just sticking to medium. I set it to three years to kind of give myself a little bit of breathing room for my first playthrough, um, so that might be a good idea for you, but you can customize everything from there. So, then, getting into uh, my save game here, let's have a look. This is the one we're streaming at the moment. So, I'm going to give you a few tips on a few first things to look at when you're loading in um <clears throat> excuse me so let's have a look here so when you're coming into your map what you're going to see is resource nodes these little crowns mean rich deposits i'm going to suggest that you try to re-roll until you get one with a rich wild animal deposit and i'm going to tell you why right now because when you eventually get your town up to the level where you can spend these development points what you want to do is go down the path of trapping and advanced skinning. And what that's going to do is double the amount of meat harvested by hunters and also get meat through trapping. You can even go to the extent of later on getting hides from traps. But you're going to want to get this one. This is the big one. And I'll tell you why. You get that with a combined rich deposit, then basically those uh, guys are going to be getting double meat from every animal they get here. And also, once you get a mana built, which that's the name of the game, right? Mana Lords, so you want to build your mana. Once you've done that, you get to choose a policy, and one of the only policies working in the game right now is wild animals on rich deposits breed twice as fast at the cost of reduced yield from crops. One thing about uh, Mana Lords that you may not know from the outset, I didn't know this, is each town is pretty much going to be specialised. So... In your first town, I suggest specializing in meat because it's just it's just going to be abundant. You're never going to run out of it. It's going to be great. That's going to get food completely tied up. The other few things that you want to make sure you got in the beginning and you get a few coins, a bit of currency in the beginning. Don't spend it all. OK, there's a few things you want to focus on. You want to get a logging camp down quickly. You want to get a woodcutter down quickly. Woodcutters here. Uh, you want to get a uh, forager down quickly and uh, just for your information as well the other benefit of hunters 
These camps don't cost anything to build. Let me give you a look here. If we go to construct a hunting camp, there is no cost to it. This is one wood, this is zero. No construction cost. So you can put those down anywhere. People are disapproving of me, that's fine. That's okay, I'm used to it. The other thing I suggest, the little bit of money that you do have, this is what you want to spend it on. You want to spend it on getting a couple farms. Uh, uh, what, I, what I say there is burgish plots rather, but you want to get the vegetable garden. It's 15 to purchase that. So the first little spending is going to be, uh, I've already overlooked the first one. What you want to do is get an ox, an extra ox, because you get hitching posts. Order another ox immediately. Put down another hitching post. They need one each for their storage for them to reside in. As you can see here, stable space, one. You could upgrade it to a small stable, but I suggest not worrying about that because each one of these only costs a single log. Let's have a look here. Yeah, Single log, whereas the upgrade costs two planks. I think that's a waste. And once you've got them, you don't need to put people on them. You don't need to do anything like that. It's just there for the ox. So that's that, that's all we need. I would say uh, woodcutter's lodge, very important too, to get the woodcutting going straight away. Um, the other thing to spend money on, however, is getting the veggie plots. And then what you want to do is save the rest of your money to do a simple trade route. So you want to build your trading post as soon as you can and you want to set up a trade route, something cheap like stone. It doesn't cost much, but it's worth it. Because if you get stone, all you need is about 60 to 70 stone. So you need stone for your church, you need stone for your manor, and you need stone for your granary. And that's all you need stone for in the game in its current state. That's it. So that's all you need to have that for. The rest you can sell. So that's a great way to get money early. Once you've got that set up, um, the other thing is to get your church built really early too because that goes a long way to getting your approval church level and uh, good supply to your people are the two major ways that you get happiness essentially and if this is over 50% you're getting one family per month I believe if it gets over 70 to 75% I think you're getting two families per month which is really good for your growth okay so that's very important the other thing um, to be aware of, this is kind of like a semi-advanced thing, but once you get the animals and everything going, you're getting a lot of hides, right? These guys are bringing in a lot of hides. Um, you don't really see them because they're getting transported immediately to my tannery. So when they bring them over here, they make leather, and that all you have to do to get a clothing store at these guys. So when you look at this and you're like, why? How, can I, how do I get clothing store supply? Get a tannery. Just get a tannery. That'll that'll make people put these stalls in. And the thing to know about marketplaces, so when you're building residential, you're looking in here and you're like, oh, they're saying they need marketplaces. Have those spread out, little ones everywhere. I've got one here. I've got one over here. I've got one here that's being made now. I've got one here and I've got one here. Just have little ones. Because if you put a big one in, they'll fill that one up first. And these people are lazy. They don't want to go anywhere for their goods, okay? So you want your markets to be spread out because they'll only go to the nearest ones. And that's what gets me this disapproval sometimes. Saying that, hey, I'm not getting food stalls. Okay, well, all right. Another thing is to keep a lot of guys in your uh, storehouses because um, they're going to be transporting those goods around and setting up those stalls and the granaries, the granaries as well. Um, be good to have them in there as well because they set up stalls, so... That's the good uh, tips for the initial stuff. So you want to be making sure that you're uh, putting down those initial buildings to get your um, supplies. So your timber, uh, your meat, and your berries. Uh, you want to make sure that you're spending your first money on uh, your veggie plot, uh, your ox, most, most importantly your ox, because um, they get the logs around. That's the only way to get the logs around your, uh, your actual city. And then you want to set, set up your trade routes. Okay, so, and the, the thing that I was getting to before with um, getting the hides and everything as well, is if you get a, uh, a plot to turn into a, uh, where is it? Cobbler shop. Cobblers make shoes, because of course they do. 
<laughs> they make shoes and um what they can do then shoes is another great way to get money i'm only getting one at the moment because everyone's got shoes but um I, I oversold them a bit so i'm only getting one for one but in the beginning you're getting eight so you're getting eight currency up here for each uh, pair of shoes that are sold and if you've got that many hunters doing them that many hides and your tanners on full i had three guys in here for a while you were just going to be pumping out so many pairs of shoes the excess ones will go to your people depending on what you set them in your uh in your actual trade posts um but uh that's going to make you a lot of currency in the beginning so whenever things go bad like you saw the fire that broke out earlier that was from people invading so another tip on military that they don't really tell you too much is when you come in here and at first it says 20 out of 36 because you don't have enough spears and shields so there's something you can work on if you on, on if you want to or you can import them but one thing you get for free um free is retinue so you get five out of 12 to start with okay and i thought how why do i only get five out of 12 how do i get more of those how you get more of those is you click on the retinue so you highlight it there you go retinue customization doesn't make much sense and then you go in here recruit man at arms so i've got 20 out of 24 at the moment you can see my currency here boom boom now i've got 22 out of 24 let's top them up now i've got 24 out of 24 so that's how you do that that comes from this currency up here which you're going to need your mana to do taxes so i would say get your mana built pretty quickly as well um, don't muck around with that. Try and get it built as quickly as you can. You're going to need a few things for that. Saw pit, etc. You'll figure it out. Um, I'm just covering the basics off in this one. So, um, But once you've got that there, um, you can have your full retinue. And you can um, select them there. Uh, what you want to do to increase your retinue is um, once you uh, go into your manor here and go to your open castle planner, here we go, Garrison Tower increases maximum retinue size by 12. So you then go from 12 to 24. So it doubles that retinue size. Pretty important to avoid those combat situations that I ran into, right? So once you've done that, all you need is that, that currency coming in from your taxes. And if you're keeping your people happy with your church and your decent flow of food and goods, then that's just going to go up and you're going to be able to have your taxes which are over here at your manor set your taxes here's something it doesn't really tell you you just go plus and minus and you're like wow that's too much what the heck's going on you can type numbers in here so you can change that to 12 percent hit enter and your approval your disapproval expected disapproval only goes up a little bit instead of jumping a huge amount okay then you can manage that and it's pretty straightforward so um yeah that's one way to do that so basically i think that covers off the really simple stuff guys i don't want to make a huge video here i just wanted to make a really quick video just to cover off the very basic things so get those uh first construction buildings going in the beginning uh make sure you only spend money on your veggie gardens uh, make sure the veggie gardens are nice and big by the way um i try to make them about that size you can make them larger uh, because that does affect the amount of veggies so with that you're going to have heaps of meat heaps of veggies especially if you're picking a place that has a rich deposit so re-roll to get that if you can and then saving your money um, to get your trade trade routes up and running okay so hopefully that helps you out i wish i had those tips in the beginning it would have been really helpful i think those are the major things to get started from there you'll be able to experiment have fun sort out what kind of um guys you want to recruit uh so like you know going in here and and uh mucking around with seeing what different type of mercenaries can have once you've got the currency you can you can experiment around with that kind of stuff right so anyway guys uh i'm going to end it there and leave you with those tips so that's your noob tips or your beginner's guide uh for mana lords and i've been having a great amount of fun with this game and the community's been loving it so if you want to join us and check it out uh you can find us at twitch.tv slash beard lasers or uh youtube.com forward slash at beard lasers we'd love to have you uh follow like subscribe hit that bell you know the rest 
Uh, but yeah, as always, until I see you guys, have a good one. Bye for now.